I think, you know, in, in the 1980s, uh, when the jihad, when the Al-Jihad against the Soviet Union was popular, uh, we got hooked, frankly, uh, into, uh, if you like, trying to determine the future of the country. And, and that, unfortunately, has stayed with us for the last 30 years. Whether it was in the 90s, whether it was in the Taliban, uh, and of course, after 2001, it was not hard to, uh, had to, uh, you know, we, we had to do a new term in policy, but again, we were stuck into uh, determining the outcome of you know, the, uh, the war in Afghanistan, the of the Americans were our allies, and we were the only land. So, for the last 30 years that I've been covering Afghanistan, uh, we have been very deeply involved in, in trying to determine an outcome of Afghanistan. I think rather than trying to uh, uh, determine uh, bringing the region together, bringing our groups together, we have taken sides in the Afghan civil war. We have invariably supported Western factions against non-Western factions. Um, there has been an element of state support continuously for decades for extremist groups, uh, both in Kashmir and in Afghanistan. So, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, this is a, a conundrum that is going to take enormous amount of statements uh, from the military and from the civilians uh, in order to resolve. And at the moment, uh, we just, uh, I mean, I'm not seeing that kind of statesmanship that is coming out of the government. Uh, would you like us to respond to this question? You have recently visited Afghanistan. And you can also see Iran because that is a part of the region that it covers in mind. Has anything gone wrong there in the two? Well, I won't uh, talk about what went wrong in Pakistan because this is not my task here. Everybody, uh, every single of you, will know better about this country than me. Uh, I would like just to add one point uh, to what Mr. Rashid said. Uh, it was not only Pakistan who was engaged in Afghanistan. It's for many years the case that Afghanistan has become a place, a country where different states of the world, including India, including Saudi Arabia, including Iran, including the United States, including Russia, uh, use this place of the world uh, to fight their war on the, sh on the shoulders of, of, of the Afghan people. It's not, not saying that the Afghan people are not responsible for nothing. Of course they are, they had the chances, several chances, but it's a country where if you speak of sovereignty, uh, then you have to speak about other countries. And of course in the last years, uh, the, uh, the international media, the Pakistani influence was very much emphasized, which has its reasons. But uh, there are other states, I mean, the Iranian influence is maybe not that strong, but it's not more positive. I mean, it's as, they have as much as they have their interest, the Pakistan has their interest, Iran has their interest too, and it's, um, so it's about everything, but not about the interest of the Afghan people, what we see. And even if the Afghan people would now sit and decide what they would like to do, they couldn't because there are so many other uh, players in this, in this scene. So, that would be important to add to the solution. Thank you. It's a great honor to be here in the platform with such distinguished people. Um, I would take it from wherever the she left off. I think he's absolutely right. We do carry the burden of history. There were historic blunders made, mistakes made. We weren't the only ones making them. But obviously, we're responsible for our country and we cannot hold others responsible for what went wrong because we should have managed it because after all it was our country. But I think what I want to do is to take this forward if I may. What are the lessons we've learned? I think what the lessons we've learned is one, that we should not obsess about what outcomes in Afghanistan which the Afghans themselves may or may not want. And two, that this whole business that we talked about for three decades, we want a friendly government in Afghanistan. You will see that does not figure in the official rhetoric anymore. We talk about we want a stable Afghanistan and a peaceful Afghanistan. I think that's a very significant admission of a past 
London, where we constantly talked about that and did certain things which obviously backfired both for the people of Afghanistan and the people of Pakistan. I think the second lesson learned was that we do not want to see a reversion to the situation of the 1990s. This is not something that Pakistan would wish to see because this brought so much grief to the region and it led finally to the, the developments that in turn led to 9-11 and I don't need to go into those. So we don't want a repeat of that. I think that's a lesson learned. The third lesson is that there cannot be a Pashtun solution to Afghanistan. There has to be an Afghan solution to Afghanistan. And it is for the Afghans to figure that out. And whatever help Pakistan is asked to provide, Pakistan should be ready, able, and willing to provide that. I think the blunder of Pakistan not reaching out to the non Pashtuns in Afghanistan is with us today. And I think there have been efforts to try to correct that, but the burden of history is very heavy. So, so I think the blowback, the consequences of certain actions, which as I said, we took jointly with other countries, but we take responsibility for our share of that number. I think we understand that, but it is a heavy legacy. And it takes time and a great deal of effort and understanding. I think what will not help is to demonize Pakistan, to make Pakistan an alibi for the failure and mistakes of others. We are ready to acknowledge our share, but we cannot serve as an excuse for others who have also failed and carried out dysfunctional policies in the past. Thank you. I've been writing about this issue for 25 years, and each time I just go interview other trustees and write about his ideas and others and uh, feel uh, very silly to go about the with him and the interview uh, on this occasion. I think the, I agree with Peter that the key has to be to leave the Afghans to decide their own future. It is everything that Afghan history shows is that Afghans do not like to have anyone impose their that their way is the problem. The Afghans have existed at every stage in their history, all attempts to uh, have outside control. Very interesting if you look at the Mughal period, um, you find that at the same time as uh, the emperors were using all their resources to suppress revolts in uh, Maharashtra and Marathas and, and, and other rebels around India, they didn't even begin to try to take the FBVs. Uh, and the uh, and the Khyber tribes. Even at the time of Aranza and the Shahan, huge subsidies were paid to keep the tribes quiet and to keep the roads open. They realized there was simply no way of taking on these guys. And, you just, and they just effectively paid over protection money to stop them uh, rebelling. Uh, and um, uh, those who did rebel at the Kalkata uh, did so very successfully uh, and divided them whatever they wanted. The same has been true with obviously the British, uh, who, who had four bloody noses successively in Afghanistan. We're now losing our fourth Afghan war. Um, the, uh, the Russians uh, and the Americans. And it has to be a, uh, uh, an Afghan solution. I think the other thing which hasn't been mentioned is that it, much of the key to the whole Pakistan relationship with Afghanistan, of course, reflects back on the Pakistan relationship with India. And the failure of India and Pakistan to come to a peaceful, acceptable solution to their relationship with each other, and the continued attention to remain, which have left elements in the army remaining to patronize the countries, feeling they need to do so because they can't defeat the, the huge Indian army by conventional means seems to be to use much of the problem. I am from a small country, Scotland, which is attached to uh, a much larger lady. We are 5 million facing 50 million English people. Uh, and we came to right with a great resolution of the Union. We the last three Prime Ministers of Great Britain, all that Scottish surnames. We basically took them over. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, some sort of uh, Sark 
uh, union in the institution which had allowed borders on an EU basis, that allowed borders to be open, that calm tensions, would immediately reduce tensions in Afghanistan and marginalize those elements that feel the need to uh, patronize its due to one, one question that comes to mind is that uh, that is Pakistan geopolitically cursed forever, cursed to the extent that uh, we can't really just engage on the Afghan theater. Is there going to be a way out? Will the future peace in Pakistan address the issue of Taliban and Afghanization? is extremism that manifests itself in Pakistan and in, in ethnic intolerance, in sectarian intolerance, in religious intolerance, in national intolerance, particularly our outlook towards the Western world, the modern world, towards Indians. Our, uh, the, the, the whole the new process of change, a positive change, normalization in Pakistan will take place through Kabul, through Delhi. By the hint is that can Pakistan be set up, normalized, on its own, head on and listen, very strong, normalization of relations with India? and normalization of state and society in Afghanistan. How much then, also there is another question that, how much our troubles are because of this geopolitical class, and how much are these troubles that Pakistan is having in their space due to our misunderstanding and history, our exaggerated self-immigrated and self-perception, our exaggerated national goals and what we wanted to achieve, what we could manage. So I think this was a bit wonderful. There's no question about it. We didn't choose this neighborhood. We can't pack our bags and shift to another neighborhood. We've got to do the best that we can. But we haven't been able to do the best we can, partly because of our own policies, but also because of geopolitical goals that other countries have followed in this region. We are not responsible for that. We have been the victim of that, but at times we have tried to influence it in a manner that has been dysfunctional to the stability of Pakistan. There's no doubt about that. But I think your question is that at times our elites have thought that geopolitical location is an asset. In actual fact, it was a liability and a huge challenge that had to be navigated with great tools 